the bantam planet Pluto is the farthest object in our planetary group. Many huge numbers of minor frosty planets and space rocks populate this district of space inside the Kuiper Belt. Once considered to be the tenth planet in our solar system, Pluto was named after Pluto, the Roman god of the underworld. However, Pluto lost this status in 2006. According to current scientific understanding, the solar system contains numerous space rocks, a modest number of dwarf planets, and just eight planets. Our insight into the universe has expanded greatly over the recent centuries, and we now have a good understanding of how planets work, what they're made of, and whether they may harbor life in the far future. However, there may still be much to discover about the stars in our own universe. What secrets has the James Webb Space Telescope revealed about Pluto? Does it harbor life either known or unknown, and does it have an internal ocean? Join us as we explore the complex mystery of what the James Webb Space Telescope found on Pluto, which was concealed for decades. Pluto was greatly admired for many years. People noticed that it had the smallest moon in the solar system. The fact that its orbit was tilted and elliptical did not bother anyone. Pluto was somewhat of an oddball, but it was a quirky planet that kids could relate to because of its size, and many adults could relate to its status as an outsider. The public felt compelled to defend Pluto, and there was public outrage when Pluto was reclassified as a dwarf planet 15 years ago. It is perhaps not surprising that the International Astronomical Union, IAU, updated their definition of a planet, and Pluto was left off the list. According to the revised criteria, a planet must have three attributes. It must orbit the sun, be large enough for its own gravity to shape it into a sphere or nearly a sphere, and it must have cleared its orbit of debris. Pluto failed the third and final test, so it is classified as a dwarf planet. The term planet has been used in a much broader sense for centuries. During the 1600s, when Galileo pointed his telescope at Jupiter, people thought any large, orbiting object in the sky was a planet. Indeed, even moons were counted. When astronomers first discovered the rocky bodies we now refer to as asteroids during the 1800s, they were also called planets. From the beginning, Pluto was considered a planet. It was first discovered in January 1930 by amateur astronomer Clyde Tombaugh, using photographs taken with a telescope. Tombaugh reported his discovery to the observatory's head, exclaiming, I have found your planet X. Tombaugh was referring to a hypothetical tenth planet that was thought to orbit the sun beyond Neptune. However, things took an unusual turn when it was discovered that Pluto was not alone in the universe. Beyond Pluto's orbit, in 1992, was an object just one-tenth as wide. Since then, nearly 2,000 frozen bodies have been found in the Kuiper Belt, the coldest region of the solar system's edge. There could be many more to come. Questions were raised when it was found that Pluto had so many neighbors. What did these new planets have in common with Earth? Why did they stand out? Suddenly, astronomers were puzzled about what constituted a planet. Mike Brown, a planetary scientist at Caltech in Pasadena, found the first Kuiper Belt object, larger than Pluto, in 2005. In honor of the TV show Xena, Warrior Princess, it was named Xena. This frozen remnant was created when the sun and planets were very young. Brown suggested that if Xena didn't qualify as a planet, then neither did Pluto. In 2006, debates over the status of Pluto and Xena reached a boiling point. The issue was settled at a meeting of the International Astronomical Union in Prague. After extensive discussion, a revised definition of a planet was adopted. By the end of the August meeting, dwarf planet status was granted to Pluto and Xena. Due to its role in redefining our understanding of the solar system, Brown earned the nickname Pluto Killer on Twitter. Textbooks were quickly revised. However, many planetary scientists have never updated their views especially those who focus on Pluto. This could be seen as either mockery or obstinacy on their part, but my colleagues and I argue in two papers that there are also valid reasons to reject the IAU's definition of a planet. The researchers reviewed various books, articles, and letters to gather this data. Some of the papers were quite old, showing the different ways the term planet has been used by scientists and the general public, and the reasons were not always clear. Between Mars and Jupiter in the asteroid belt, you'll find this issue. After its discovery in 1801, 
Ceres was granted planet status alongside Pluto. As more objects were discovered in the asteroid belt, Ceres was said to have lost its planetary status. By the end of the 1800s, Ceres had many neighbors. According to legend, Ceres lost its planetary status because it was no longer visible. This is how Ceres and Pluto were similarly troubled. Mir's group now says this isn't the whole story. Indeed, even until the 20th century, Ceres and other asteroids were still considered planets, though minor ones. A science bulletin in 1951 noted that many planets orbit our sun, with the caveat that most of these planets were small, ranging from the size of a city block to the state of Pennsylvania. It was only in the 1960s that minor planets became a disparaging term. They were observed by spacecraft for the first time, although planetary features were still present in the largest asteroids. However, most smaller ones were found to be unusual lumps, showing that they were not just smaller versions of the larger spherical planets. The fact that asteroids often fail to clear their orbits is irrelevant to the decision to reclassify them. What about moons, you ask? Until the 1920s, they were referred to as planets or secondary planets by scientists. It's surprising that despite scientific evidence to the contrary, the common practice of referring to moons as planets persists. Non-scientific media, such as astrological calendars, were largely responsible for this shift. Horoscopes in these texts are derived from planetary arrangements. Astrologers insisted that keeping the number of planets small made them easier to understand. However, new data from space exploration reintroduced moons into the planetary family, especially large spherical ones. The term planet was used again in academic publications starting in the 1960s. The International Astronomical Union's definition of a planet is not the first. The term has undergone various definitional shifts, could be modified again if necessary. The IAU's definition is often defended because it keeps the number of planets manageable. What would life be like if the universe contained hundreds or thousands of planets? How would the average person remember them all? What would we put on lunch boxes? The idea that focusing on just eight planets might deter people from exploring the universe is a valid concern. Perhaps, in the end, the definition of a planet is subjective. In 2015, when NASA's New Horizons probe flew by Pluto, it revealed a planet with much more activity than anyone had anticipated. Nitrogen bluffs, reminiscent of Norway's rugged coastline, and methane ice shards as tall as buildings can be found on the dwarf planet. Pluto is scarred by craters deeper than the Grand Canyon and frozen volcanoes towering higher than the Himalayas. The spacecraft's cameras captured a massive heart-shaped feature on the distant globe, which captivated millions on Earth. Eight years have passed since scientists received that first breathtaking view, but they are still examining the world with fresh perspectives. Since New Horizons was traveling at 32,300 miles per hour during its closest approach to Pluto, it was only able to take detailed photos of the side facing the sun. One of these images was quickly obscured by darkness. Now that scientists have analyzed the close-up images of the near side taken by the spacecraft days before it passed by, they are beginning to examine pictures of the far side. Scientists refer to such a region as the far side or the dark side. Despite the low resolution, the photos clearly show the landscape in detail down to about one mile which is about four times more detailed than images captured by the Hubble Space Telescope orbiting Earth. Scientists now have a new perspective on this unique world, thanks to the analysis of many pictures revealing clues about questions, such as whether a sea lies beneath the icy crust and how compounds freeze out of the atmosphere to form the planet's surface. The findings even support the possibility that the cold world could support life. However, there are mysteries revealed by the photos. For example, Ice structures that resemble skyscrapers were recently discovered on Pluto's far side. These structures appear to encircle the planet and are among Pluto's most prominent mysteries. Richard Binzel, a planetary scientist at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in Cambridge and a New Horizons co-investigator, says Pluto is the gift that keeps on giving. In 1996, Scientists were able to see surface details at a resolution of 310 miles thanks to the Hubble Space Telescope. The images were blurry but showed a planet-like globe with more global contrast than any other planet in the solar system, including Earth. In July 2015, New Horizons famously observed a heart-shaped feature 
just north of the equator, confirming that Pluto is indeed a dynamic world. Sputnik Planum, a frozen basin filled with enormous icebergs, is located inside Pluto's left ventricle and is now known to significantly affect the planet's dynamics. Beats of sublimating ice rise to the surface as the sun warms the ice layer, revealing a world of icy valleys and mountains. The planets and the universe have a lot more to show us. The James Webb Space Telescope and the ongoing study of Pluto will continue to expand our understanding of what's out there.